clap your hands and praise the Lord. How we honor the Lord today. We do give him praise, don't we? Amen. Thank you, CGs. If you would make your way to the audience, God, we praise once again. Thank God for this day that the Lord has given unto us. And I am truly grateful for each and every one of you who have gathered here to celebrate not only the Lord's day, but what the Lord did in the life of my mother, amen, some 63 years ago. Amen. I know she was just joking. Amen. Just a few minutes ago, she came and said to me, she said, you almost killed me. <laughs> to God. And then she proceeded to tell me who gave me my first haircut and all of those wonderful things. And uh, it's just a joy to have my mother living. Amen. To be with us. What a mighty God we serve, amen. Who would have thought, amen, a boy born in Omaha, Nebraska will make his way to the nation's capital to serve such a people as you. We are grateful and thankful, amen. And let me say to this group of antique cars, thank you for sacrificing for coming and sharing with us on this day. I know that many of you left your own churches to come, amen, and be with us. I am grateful and I'm thankful. And if I need to call your pastor, I'll call him and let him know that you were in church today. Amen. And the young lady, I believe, that's in the wheelchair, I think your grandfather, amen, great-grandfather, was a member of this church, the Pilgrim, and was a deacon at this church. And, and Suber, yes, yes, amen. Brother Suber was our, uh, played the piano when I came here. I met him, and so what a joy it is for you to reconnect with us through, amen, and through them. God, we praise. All right, what, uh, amen, yes, got that. Amen, to God we praise. We bless his name for each and every one of you. Uh, as I looked out this morning in the early service, and those who came, and, uh, they, were, they were dressed with this uh, uh, headpiece. Amen. And some of you have them on even now. And uh, to God, I'm glad they ran out of them. It was a little strange preaching to a whole group of folks with little. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> whoever thought of that, but <laughs> it's just a little awkward. But praise God, and I know that you're doing it in celebration of me, and so I thank you for it. And thank you for your courage and boldness, amen, to wear them. <laughs> Minister Fincher still has her on, the hers on, thank you so much. I know. Amen. Till the party's over. Let's, um, let me honor the first lady who's with us today. Sister Michelle came out. Let's praise God for her presence today. Amen. She's way over there in the corner. I, I couldn't even see her. Wave at me, lovely. I can't, there, amen. Praise God. She's She's getting better, and we thank God for, for that. Amen. All right. Those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to the gospel according to St. Matthew's. Thirteenth chapter. Matthew, the thirteenth chapter. I want to begin reading at verse 44. Mm -hmm. 
If you're with me, say amen. Amen. All right. Everyone should be there about now. If not, just look up at the screen. And we got it for you. The 44th verse of Matthew 13th chapter. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hideth. And for the joy, therefore, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. This is the word of God for the people of God. I want to use these two verses today and just kind of segue. There are, there are eight parables that the writer gives to us in the 13th chapter of Matthew. But I want to lift two of them out today. It's a, I believe they are, they are, they're partners, if you will, to share and to enlighten you what the Lord has placed in my heart. And I want to talk to us today from the subject, how much is this life worth to you? How much is this life worth to you? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We thank you. We praise you for our time of preaching and sharing and teaching. Pray that your word will not return void, that it will accomplish those things that's needed in the life of your people who are gathered in this place. We thank you once again, God, for the privilege of life and living. Thank you, Lord. We know that it's not because of our goodness, but because we serve a good God. And God, we are so grateful and thankful. In Jesus' name, bless, save, deliver, restore, amen, and thank God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Amen. When I think about today, of course, today is the date of my birth. And of course, every so many years, it falls on Sunday. Um, then there are times when it falls on a Friday. You know, there are those who are concerned sometime, sometimes about Friday the 13th. It's never been a problem in my life. Amen. Amen. And so it's like any other Friday. I want to uh, share and just uh, develop this sermon and present it in this format, if you will. I trust it will be a blessing to, to you. Um, when I think about my own life and the worth and the value of my life and where I am today and what God has done and, and how far he has brought me, I guess I was literally awakened a couple of weeks ago as to where I am and who I am. A couple of weeks ago, I was um, looking for a deli, a deli that uh, Sister India uh, Luckett shared with me and that it was black owned and that they had uh, uh, some good deli sandwiches. They do a good job. So I, I sought out to find it. It was on Bladensburg, went to Bladensburg, uh, got there about 6.03, got out of my vehicle, walked to the establishment, and uh, uh, it was closed. Closed at 6 o'clock. The gentleman inside said close at 6, uh, even though it was 6.02, 6.03. He's timely. But what, uh, what happened, and this is a true story, there was a young man that was walking down the street, and he was rapping a song. And uh, I asked him, I said, what's the song that you are you're rapping or singing? You know, and I'm still trying to decide whether you sing a rap, talk a rap, or whatever you do with a rap. But... But uh, he, he had the song going. And I said, what's that song? And he says, this song is for young people. I said, I said, what do you mean? He said, this song is for young people. He said, amen, old people don't sing rap. He said, old people listen to gospel. And I said, well, what makes you think I'm old? And he looked at me. He says, I see that gray under that cap. 
two weeks before my birthday, you know, there was an awakening that I'm not as young as I used to be. Amen. And so we've come to the reality, amen, that at a certain age, Brother Dion, amen, we get old. And you know, you never think about that. You never think about in your 20s and 30s that one day you're going to get old. And somebody's going to call you old. Help me, somebody. Amen. But how many of you know that I've lived long enough to be grateful and thankful? And to be called old man, pops, <laughs> you name it. And so every now and then I have to catch myself because, you know, I've been driving and some, you know, I'm doing some things and they say, old man, watch where you're going. And I want to say, who are you talking to? <laughs> but praise God for our life. And I thought about that. And I thought about living. I thought about where I'm at. I thought about what God has done in my life and how far he has brought me and how he's blessed me. And, and, and retrospect, looking at what I've come through. The reality is, maybe I'm not just speaking, I'm speaking for myself. The reality is, maybe I should not be alive. But I am because of the grace of God. And I am thankful and I'm grateful for it. I put myself in a position many times where my life could have been taken. But I thank God today. And so I thought about these parables today, these parables I trust, and I, these parables literally preach a testimony for me in my life. He shares with us, Jesus shares eight parables, and I've chosen these two particular parables to share with us today, because I believe these two parables are designed to help us evaluate and appreciate the kingdom life. How many know there's some people who don't appreciate kingdom life? When I talk about kingdom life, I talk about kingdom life in terms of our connection to the body of Christ and to church. He gives us eight, and I'm not going to rehearse all of the eight parables that he has shared with us, but last week we talked about the first parable, about the sower, the seed, and the soil. We, we learned that there was nothing wrong with the seed or the sower, but the problem was the condition of the soil. And how many of you know that when the condition of your heart is not right, it's very difficult to receive the seed of God's word. I don't care who's sowing it. Amen. If your heart is not right, it's not going to be receptive to the word of God. Amen. And how many know that life can be hard? And life can be rocky. And life can be stony. But praise God that God also can give us some good days. Amen. And so as we look at this parable today, these two parables here, uh, the hidden treasure speaks of something of value in the land, and the pricey pearl speaks of something of value in the sea. The parable of the treasure, the Bible says again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Amen. Saints of God is very, it's right there before you. It's interesting. First of all, we need to understand that it was hidden. Let the church say it was hidden. Yes. What does that mean? Amen. The treasure that was hidden speaks of our relationship, our salvation to Jesus Christ. Everybody won't see the value of the kingdom. I said everybody won't see the value of the kingdom. Let me put it in this term. Everybody won't see the value of coming to church every Sunday. They won't see the value of the things that we do during the week. They won't see the value of vacation Bible school. They don't see the value of prayer and the proclamation of the word of God engaging in mission and serving the least and the left out. They will not see the value. It's hidden. There are a lot of things that's hidden from those who gather in this place or those who refuse to come and gather in the house of God. Secondly, we notice that the treasure is found unexpectedly. This man was not, was not in the field. He was in the field digging. He wasn't digging for treasure. He was just out there. We can surmise that he was working in the field. He was digging for something else. Perhaps he was plowing that field, y'all. And he stumbles upon this treasure. So he wasn't even looking for it when he found it. How many of you know the whole lot of y'all wasn't looking for Jesus when he found you? Do I have a witness here? 
Do I have anybody in here understand that you were just coming to church out of habit? Or you were coming because you were invited? You were coming because your mama or your daddy made you come to church? But while you were sitting there, amen, and we know this is incorrect that you found Jesus. The fact of the matter, you don't have to find Jesus because Jesus was never lost. Do I have a witness here? But he found us. And so, but he found the value. And so he didn't find Jesus. He found the value of what Jesus could mean in his life. Are y'all with me here? And so understand salvation. Nothing should be able to match the value of your relationship with Christ Jesus. Nothing. Hey, notice this treasure is worth everything to this man. Jesus indicated that there is nothing in this man's life that can match the value of the treasure which he has found. Somebody say, hallelujah, Jesus. And so, burying your valuables in the ground sounds strange to us today. Amen. But how many of you know that it was commonplace in the first century? But not only in the first century, but the 19th century, it was commonplace. The 20th century, it was commonplace. It was commonplace because, amen, how many of you know that when your grandparents and your great-grandparents couldn't go to the banks and deposit their money, they hid their money in mattresses. They hid their monies in pillowcases and other places in the house. That's where they hid their money. But praise God, we live in a different day and time now where we put our money in safe deposit boxes and banks and, and, amen, and saving places. We put our money there. But in the first century, y'all, they didn't have the privilege of doing that. So why is this important? Because this is important because especially in Palestine, because it was a place of frequent warfare. And when there was war going on, they would come and they would, the, the enemy would confiscate or come to a person's house and confiscate their valuables. And so they dug and hid their valuables in the ground. Do I have a witness here? You know I'm right. How many of you remember the, uh, Matthew, the 25th chapter of the story of the talents? The talents that the amen that Jesus as the servant would gave one man five talents. The talents was money, and he gave another one two, and he gave another one one, and the one with the five and the two, they went, amen, and invested their money and gave a return back to their servant. But that one individual, the Bible says he did what? Those Bible readers. He hid his money in the ground. Do I have a witness here? Amen. He buried it in the ground. Well, amen. Keep this in mind. The main point of the parable is a man found something so valuable that he sold everything that he had to get it. I said he sold everything he had to get it. So he was so excited about finding the treasure that he was willing to do whatever he needed to do in order to purchase it. Did I tell you that the treasure cost more than the field? He was willing to purchase and to buy, amen, this treasure, even though, amen, it costs more than the field. This man, this man, amen, found something of value. And I want you, my brothers and sisters, to look at your own life and look at the worth of where you are in living, amen. Is there anything of value in your life now that you're willing to sell everything, amen, to purchase that one thing? Amen. And so he tells us, the, the Bible tells us the parable of the treasure, then the parable of the pearl. And again, the kingdom is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Here's a man who was a merchant. Let the church say merchant. He was a merchant. What's a merchant? A merchant is a man who would buy wholesale and sell, amen, retail. In the parable, he's looking specifically for beautiful pearls. The entrepreneur in him, amen, that day, he did two things, y'all. He looked for pearls that he could sell, and then he looked for pearls of high quality that he could keep for himself. They were the most valuable gems in the world at that time. And if you owned a pearl, you owned a fortune. And there's a good reason. That, there was a good reason for it, y'all. It's a good reason because pearl hunting involved immense danger. The fine quality of pearls are obtained from the pearl oyster. Since the oyster thrive at an average depth of 40 feet, that means that the pearl isn't just a, 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 a treasure you stumble across. You don't just walk up on it. Amen. You've got to dive deep in order to get the pearl. Anybody hearing me today? 
trying to give you the difference or, or show you the, the image of these two parables. You do know that every oyster does not contain a pearl. Help me somebody. And so that means that he had, amen, he had to gather in a lot of pearls, many of pearls in order to find one, I mean oysters in order to find one pearl. The Bible also stresses the value of pearls. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 that we're not to cast our pearls before swine. In other words, don't give something to such, of such great value to pigs. It's foolish to do so. In Revelation chapter 21, when John described heaven using earthly figures of speech, he mentions the streets of gold and the gates of pearl. Amen. Speaking of tremendous value. So the parable describes a man who goes around looking for beautiful pearls and then sells them to retail for profit. Are y'all with me? But when he finds the most beautiful pearl he has ever seen, he sell, there it is again, he sells everything that he has to obtain it for himself. Amen. And so that leads me, my brothers and sisters, because the treasure and the pearl are representative of the kingdom of God. Well, what's the value of the kingdom? Both of these parables teach us about the incomparable, amen, value of the Lord's kingdom, the church, the pearl especially, y'all. Why? Because the pearl was a gem that could not be improved upon. Help me. It's not the church of some man. Christ is the builder of the church. Christ is the head of the church. And therein lies the value. And when you think about how much it means to us to be a part of the church, to know that Jesus, y'all, amen, sacrificed his life on the cross that we might live. To know that we can approach the throne of the almighty God and call him Father. How much is this life worth to you? Amen. Indeed, how do you begin to compare those riches with the material things that are so familiar to us? How can you compare the blessings of prayer, amen, my brothers and sisters, with a brand new car? How can you compare them? And I, I want to parenthetically stop right here and share with you my brothers and sisters, that what the writers are trying to get us to understand that there's value in the kingdom of God. There's value in the church, the ecclesia, those who have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. There's value of allowing God to rule and reign in our lives. I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters. These two men teach us a lesson, amen, a lesson that we need to grab hold to today. And they teach us a lesson that there ought to be so great value that you're willing, amen, to sell everything you have to buy the field to own the treasure. You're willing to sell everything you have to have the great pearl, amen, a pearl that, that is perfect, that man can't make any better. Do I have a witness here? And that's the way you look at the church of God, that there's value when you come here. So y some of y'all still looking at me strange. Amen. And how, why is it and how is it that you, let me just give you my own testimony because I told you that this sermon is literally my own testimony. When I think about my 63 years in which I've lived, amen, I've recognized, I wish I had known early on in life the value of what it meant to be in the kingdom of God. Do I have a witness here? Amen. If I had known better, if I had known better, I wouldn't have any, as many bumps and bruises and scars, amen, in my life. If I had remembered and recognized the value of being in the kingdom of God. Is there anybody here that understands there's value to getting up, coming to here on Sunday morning? There's value to you sitting in that pew. Somebody might be looking at you and say, well, what's the value? Well, a young man that came down the aisle in our early service the value is that he says I said why are you here he says because I want to get better and how many of you know that the reason why some of you come every Sunday because the value is in the fact that I'm trying to get better I'm not trying to stay where I am I'm not trying to stay who I am I'm trying to get better is there anybody up in here when you look at your life and look at where you are and what the Lord is doing in your life amen do you want to get better 
Praise the Lord. There's a value. I said there's value. There's value. There's value. How can you even, amen, begin to calculate the value of the death on the cross of our Christ? You can't even compare his dying to you wanting to live in the suburbs. You can't compare, amen, the nails that were in his hand, amen, to you wanting to shop at Saks Fifth Avenue and, and not. You can't compare the value of having diamonds, amen, and having a relationship with Christ. I just might as well parenthetically just drop this in and let you know that when we talk about, amen, these, the, the treasure and the pearl, it speaks of the kingdom of God, but it goes further because it talks about a relationship that we have with Christ. And I've come by to tell you that there should be no relationship that, amen, that overshadows you have more value to you than your relationship with Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness? I don't care who he is. I don't care who she is. I don't care what they've done for you. They should not trump the value that you have with your relationship with Christ. I love my children, but how do you know that my value with my relationship with Christ is greater than my relationship with my children? Why? Because my children will act funny. Do I have a witness here? Friends will act funny. Folks will walk out on you. But the God that I serve, my Bible says he's in, amen, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I value him. Somebody said, I got Jesus. And that's enough. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Understand. And so, so that brings me to some points of this text. Amen. There's some similarities in the, these two parables. And the similarities of the two parables are this, y'all. First of all, when we look at the kingdom of God, how many know that the kingdom of God involves sacrifice? Let the church say sacrifice. It involves sacrifice. These men, both of them, found something of value. and They were willing to sacrifice what they already had to get something of greater value. Do I have a witness here? Amen. I want to know, have you ever had something or wanted something so bad that you're willing to sacrifice? Amen. Amen. I said all of us have done it at some point in time. That when I was growing up as a kid, there was a swing bicycle that I wanted. Amen. And believe it or not, my family, we weren't, amen, we weren't the greatest, uh, amen, we didn't have the, 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 my parents didn't have the biggest bank book and, you know, we were, yeah, we were poor. <laughs> Can, can I tell you, we, we, we were poor. Amen. And I wanted a swim bicycle, and mom and daddy couldn't buy it. They didn't have the money to buy it, and I had enough sense to know they couldn't buy it. Unlike these young people today, they want our like, parents to buy something that they don't have money to buy. And some parents are silly, and I'm sorry, enough to... And I saved my lunch money, y'all. I saved my lunch money every week, every week. I saved my lunch money till I got enough money to buy a swing bicycle, a used. Do, do I have a witness here? Amen. Because, because it was of great value. <laughs> Are y'all with me here? And how many of today, there's some adults here that there's some things that you wanted real bad and you were willing to sacrifice so that you could get it. You went without something so that you can make sure, amen, that you could obtain that thing that had great value in your life. Am I talking to anybody up in here? Amen. And so understand, saints of God, it requires sacrifice. It requires giving up something. And so I want to say to us today that even now, our relationship with Christ, our our relationship to the church requires you sacrificing something. We don't want to over sacrifice anything today. We live in a generation now, amen, that believe that sacrifice is taboo. They don't want to sacrifice time. They don't want to sacrifice any rest. They want to sacrifice, God knows they won't sacrifice any money. They don't want to sacrifice any energy. Do I have a witness here? Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? After all that God has done for us in our lives, at least you can do on Sunday morning, amen, and sacrifice and get here on time and give God the praise that he's due. 
Lord. Help me, somebody. And so they made sacrifices, selling everything that they had to obtain, watch this, their treasures. Their treasures, their treasures, y'all. Amen. They bought the treasure and the pearl with, 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 with money. But the Bible says that you can't buy salvation with money. We understand that, don't we? Amen. But nevertheless, how many of you know, amen, salvation didn't cost us anything, but it cost God everything. It cost God his son. Help me, somebody. And so understand that, amen, salvation doesn't cost us anything, but our commitment costs everything. And if you're going to be committed to the things of God, it's going to cost you something. I said it's going to cost you something. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, in the first 10 chapters, he writes costly grace versus cheap grace. He captures these two parables. He's listen to what he writes here. Costly grace is the treasure hidden in a field. For the sake of it, a man will gladly go and sell all that he has. It is the pearl of great price to buy for that for which the merchant will sell all of his goods. It is the kingly rule of Christ for those for whose sake a man will pluck out his eye for which causes him to stumble. It is the call of Jesus Christ at which the disciple leaves his net and follows him. Costly grace is the gospel which must be sought after again and again. Do I have a witness here? Amen. Can I tell you, grace costs you something. If you want to have the favor of God, you've got to seek it day in and day out. But I've come by to tell you that when you get it, you've got something of great value. Is there anybody here, amen, that's happy and excited about the fact that you now, amen, you've got grace. Grace costs you, costly grace. Grace cost us something. And we praise God for it. Salvation cost Jesus his life. For us, it's the price of commitment. Now, now. Bible says in Luke 9, 57, it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said unto him, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. Here was a man who wanted to be a follower of Jesus, and Jesus responded by saying, foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his. In essence, Jesus was saying, here's the price for following me. You give up your comfort. Amen. I said you give up your comfort. And, and when you give up your comfort, God says, I'll give up my kingdom. Are y'all with me here? And there's a cost involved in being a follower of Christ. And Jesus wants us to understand that as we look at this generation who knows nothing about sacrifice. Amen. Do I have a witness here? Understand he wants us to sacrifice so that he can give us something. Everybody wants to enjoy all the blessings of the kingdom, but they don't want to give up anything. Help me, somebody. Amen. We don't want to give up anything. We, we want everything for nothing. Oh, I just might as well park there right now because a whole lot of you are asking God for some things, but you ain't willing to give up anything. You want him to get you out of trouble, but you ain't willing to, amen, bow down before him. You want him to pay your bills, do you have a witness, but you ain't willing to pay your tithes. Help me, somebody. Amen. You want you him to help you get you out of trouble, but you're not willing, amen, to call on his name. It costs you something. But just as the parable of the men, the parable here had to sacrifice to gain their treasures. We must also make sacrifice to gain our treasures. Luke 14 says, Jesus says that we need to count up the cost. Amen. I said we need to count up the cost. He says to fail to do so is like starting a building without checking your, fun, for your funds first. Or going to war without counting your men. There's a cost involved, involved in being a Christian, and we need to determine from the start whether we're willing to pay the price. Are y'all with me here? Amen. And so the kingdom, the kingdom involves sacrifice. Let the church say sacrifice. I said it involves sacrifice, and I'm glad, amen, praise God that I've lived long enough, y'all, to recognize and understand that I'm willing to sacrifice any and everything. There's nothing that I don't have that I won't give it over to the Lord because I recognize and know that if I give it back to him, he's able to give it back to me three, amen, and 30, 60, and 100 fold. That's right here in this same text, y'all. 
And so we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Is there anybody here that's willing to sacrifice so that you can become a recipient of what's in the kingdom of God? Some of y'all still looking at me strange. I might as well just circumvent and just tell you a couple of things that what's in the kingdom. That if you sacrifice a few things that God is willing to bless you because there's some great treasures in the kingdom. Is there anybody here that knows that God can give you peace that with passes all understanding. How many of you know that God will give you joy that the world can't give you and the world can't take it away? How many of you know, amen, that God can give you some things that the world can't give you? Is there anybody up in here that recognizes that if you stand for him, that he'll stand for you? Is there anybody here that's willing to sacrifice a little effort and time? The Bible says, if you suffer for me, you shall also reign with me. Is there anybody up in here that's willing to sacrifice so that God can bless you beyond your wildest dream, that God can open doors that no man can close. Are you willing to sacrifice so that God can pick you up and put you on the mantelpiece of life so you can be a trophy to a world and let them know that if you're willing to bow down before him, he's willing to lift you up. Is there anybody here that's willing to sacrifice unto a loving God to see him work wonders in your life? Sacrifice. Gave up everything. But let me, let me close this thing out. Amen. As I give you my testimony in this text. The kingdom, the kingdom is, it involves sacrifice. But the kingdom is a source of joy. I said it's a source of joy. How do I know that? Because Jesus said that the man who finds the treasure for joy over it goes and sells all that he has. This man sells everything that he has, y'all. But he does it with joy. Talk to me. I said he does it with joy. Not regret, but he does it with joy. When the last time you've come up in the house of God and you've done something with joy. I got to preach 30 minutes to get a little joy out of some of y'all. Do I have a witness? Out of any day in the week. At least on Sunday morning, you ought to be willing to give him joy in your praise. Do I have a witness? I don't care what happened Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I mean, no, he lets you see Saturday. So you can get you ready for Sunday morning. And for nothing else, you ought to have joy when you come up in here. Do I have a witness? And so it's a source of joy. E -e Amen. And we've often said, and you hear us, hear preachers say it all the time, that if you're going to give, at least give it with joy. But if you're going to give it reluctantly, amen, then you might as well keep it. And so whatever you have, you ought to give it with, with joy. Whether it's giving of your money, whether it's giving in song, whether it's giving in service, whether it's giving in praise, you ought to give it with, with joy. Do I have a witness here? Notice the man doesn't complain about the sacrifice he had to make. And whatever the cost it seemed like, he gives a lot for the field, but he gets much more in return. Do I have a witness here? And that's why I want to tell somebody that if you give it with joy, God can give something back to you much more in return. The Bible says that when we praise him, he inhabits the praises of the saints. And how many know that when the presence of God is in the midst, also the power of God is in the midst. And so that's why you ought to praise him with joy. Do I have a witness here? Amen. And when it seems like you are sacrificing a lot, know that you stand to gain much more. Well, I think, I think, I think some things hold true in our sacrifice for Christ. Paul says, for things, amen, were gained to me. These I have counted lost for Christ. But indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Did Paul make sacrifices to follow Christ? Yes, he did, y'all. But he did it with joy, knowing what he was going to gain. Are y'all with me here? And I praise God that he sacrificed. The point is that every sacrifice 
that we make should be made with joy. Amen. Do I have a witness here? You've heard the whole story of the amen, the story about the pig, the chicken and the pig. How the chicken gave eggs and the pig gave bacon. And so you know the chicken just gave a contribution. But the pig gave his life. Do I have a witness here? And so that's what a sacrifice is. Are you willing to give, amen, all that you have and your life? Well, I know some of you are looking at me and say, well, Pastor Jones, I'm not where you are. Well, I'm coming by to tell you, amen, don't you wait too long. Because you don't know how much time you have. Amen. And so I know that some of you are lagging behind, but I've come by to tell you, some of you need to get in a hurry. And whatever it is that you are, we ought to be willing to sacrifice everything that you have. Because God gave everything that he had. Do I have a witness here? And so I close here with the kingdom is a source of great joy. But the kingdom is entered under different circumstances. The parable, the two parables we've looked at are very similar. Each parable has a man. Both men found something of great value. They recognized that great value and were willing to pay any price to obtain what they found. Their sacrifice was made joyfully. Amen. But there's one big difference, though. In the parable of the treasure, the man made his find by accident. He stumbled across his treasure. Do I have a witness here? And how many of you, amen, have stumbled across the fact that God has been good and he's been better than you, than you've been to yourself? And when you look at it in retrospect, I stumbled across this thing that can't nobody do me like Jesus. I stumbled upon the fact that no good thing Will he withhold from me them that love him? I stumbled upon the fact that weeping may endure for a night, but joy shows up in the morning. I wish I had known this a few years ago. I stumbled on the, upon the fact, amen, that if I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battle. I stumbled upon the fact that all sickness is not under death. I stumbled upon the fact the host shall encamp against me. In this will I be confident to have a witness here. I stumbled upon the fact no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I stumbled upon the fact that can't nobody do me like Jesus. I stumbled upon the fact, y'all, that when the world pressed me down, the Lord can lift me up. Is there anybody here like the man, amen, that found the treasure just now because you stumbled upon it? You ought to be willing to sell everything that you have because you know now how valuable it is to walk with Jesus. Somebody say he walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I'm his very own. And the, there it is, the joy that we share, none other has ever known. Is there anybody here? Amen. Say, I'm glad. I know I stumbled on it, but because I found it, I'm going to give up some stuff. I'm going to give up Friday nights. I'm going to give up Saturday. I'm coming down your road. I'm going to give up Saturday night. I'm going to give up drinking kibasi. I'm going to give up smoking weed because I found, I said I found a value in Jesus. Is there anybody here? that know that he will bless your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. But I can't leave you there because the other parable said this man was intentionally going after some pearls and praise God. We've got some folks in the house of God that I came here intentionally 
to find a, a pearl in Jesus. Do I have a witness here? That's why every now and then you got to tell somebody who's playing church, get out of my way. I'm going, amen, deep sea diving. I'm diving today. I'm going down to get my pearl. Do I have a witness? Is there anybody here that came to church one day and you went down to get your pearl and you came up with a great price and you ran out of here and said, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. And so the enemy can't bother me anymore because I got it. I got it on Sunday. Do I have a witness? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I'm trying to leave you now. But let me close with this. There are some people who enter the kingdom by stumbling. And then there are other folks who enter the kingdom intentionally. Do I have a witness here? And praise God for those in the word of God. Amen. That gives us examples. I don't have time to give them all to you. But listen, I want to close with this. Amen. When we look at this text, the important thing is not how we find the treasure of the kingdom of God. But the important thing is simply that we find it. Amen. Doesn't matter how you find it, but you found it. There are really two things that stand out in these parables. Number one, what's hidden from the world about the kingdom of God is not hidden from us. Somebody shout hallelujah. What's hidden from them is not hidden from us. What he wants the disciples to preach and teach in these parables is hard to explain what you don't understand. That's why he was teaching these parables. But when you understand that God has all power in his hand, you can preach and teach and tell them that God can do the impossible. Well, I leave you with this. What you need to give up and what you need, what you stand to gain. Church, praise God, that I recognize I got more to gain than I will give up. Do I have a witness here? If you don't believe me, ask Job to show up. Job will tell you when they talk to Job and said, Job, you ought to curse God and die. Job says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. The Bible said that the Lord gave the Job, amen, two and threefold. He doubled his blessing. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that praise God? I'm glad that I found Jesus. I'm glad I found Jesus. I'm glad that he found me. I'm glad that I got Jesus. Hallelujah, church. Praise God, church. Is there anybody here happy about the fact that you got him? I got him. 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 That's why I don't do the things I used to do. I got him because I don't go to places I used to go. I got him. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that's glad that this life with Jesus is worth it all? I'm glad about it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm trying to leave y'all, but this is for me today. Praise God. 63 years. I'm glad about it. I'm glad. I'm glad that he saved me. I'm glad that he raised me. I'm glad that he keeps on blessing me over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Let the church say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah.
what is this life worth to you? Is it worth you giving up some things? What is it worth? What is it worth? They sold everything to buy the field where the hidden treasure was. He sold everything for the great pearl that he found. What are you willing to give up? And so church should not just be a casual thing that you do on Sunday morning. You ought to value coming here. It ought to make a difference. It requires sacrifice. That's why you shouldn't let anybody work on your nerves. Amen. If somebody make you mad when you come to church, that's your problem. That's your problem. You ought to value, it says, I'm, I'm coming because there's something I need to get. Something I need to hear. Something I need to change in my life. In that major, I said to him this morning, and I'll say to you, there's nothing that I don't own that I won't give up for Christ. Amen. Nothing. No car, no house, no jewelry, no clothes. I'll give it all up for him. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have any of it. Am I making sense here? So just two things I want you to do. I want you to lift the level of your sacrifice. Are you hearing me? I want you to lift the level of your sacrifice. When Sunday morning comes, stop telling people you're tired. Amen. I didn't go because I'm tired. And then when Monday morning comes, you get your clothes on and go to work. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have a place to go to work. So at least you ought to come and take two hours out of a Sunday and tell God, thank you. Touch my body. Here's the second one. Here's the second one. That whatever you do to acquire the pearl of the treasure, the value of our gathering, do it with joy. Do it with joy. Amen. I said do it with joy. Oh, I guarantee you it'll change your life. Amen. Amen. Every now and then I have to tell a few folks on Sunday morning, get a hold of yourself. Whoever you're mad at, hold it for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But not on Sunday. Amen. Amen. To God we pray. He's done too much for us. He's been too good to us. Why should you have joy? Because the Bible's true. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's my strength. He'll give you strength, guys. You want that joy. The joy of it. I'm happy about it. Praise God for it. Amen. I wish I could get it over to two or three more people. But I'm finished today. It's my testimony. This 
this life with Christ means the world to me. It means the world to me. I don't know anything else. I've sold out for this life with Christ. And I've come to tell you that when Christ gets all of you, that means he gets everything that you have. And if you're not willing to give everything you have, then he doesn't have all of you. That's my challenge to you. Come on, Standy. All over the building, wherever you are, man, woman, boy, your girl, quickly. You're here today. You're not in Christ. You're not in church. Come, 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 come. Things can be better. They can get better. Man, woman, boy, your girl, you're here today. Come on.